Hi everyone. So in this video, we are going to see how to set up our computers to program in Java. So first, we are going to need a shell. Sometimes it's called a command prompt. If you use a Mac, go to Applications, then scroll down to Utilities, and here you'll find the terminal. Alternatively, you can also use Spotlight and just type Terminal. If you use Windows, go to Search, type CMD, and select Command Prompt, and that opens your Command Prompt. I'm currently in my home directory, which is C Users GVJ. I can create a subdirectory by typing mkdir and the name I want to use, Java, for example. I can now change into the directory Java by typing cd Java. All right, let's create another subdirectory called setup. I can now list the content of the current directory by typing dir. And I can see that the current directory contains one subdirectory, the one I just created, setup. This is very similar on the Mac. I create a directory by typing mkdir and then the name of the directory, Java, here. And then I can change into that directory by typing cd in the name of the directory, Java, cd Java. And I can create the subdirectory setup. The one difference is going to be to list the content of the directory. I'll type ls here to list the content of the directory instead of dir on Windows. Okay, so now we need the necessary software to compile and execute Java programs. Uh, it's called the Java Development Kit. So let's see what I have on this machine. So the first question is, can I at least execute a Java program? You're most likely already able to do that on your own machine. But let's see. So I go into the terminal, the command prompt, and I'm going to call uh, the program that executes Java program. And this program is called Java. So it's kind of convenient and just go Java. Now, I don't want to actually execute a Java program here. I just want to know if that program, Java, is available. So I'm just going to call it and ask uh, the version that is going to be executed by default, dash version. So if there is a Java program on that machine, uh, it's going to print the version that's there. And if Java is not installed on that machine, then it will tell me that it does not understand this command, Java. So let's see. It worked. So it tells me that there is a version of Java. The default version is what it says here, 1.8.0 and some change. And that's what we call the version 8, in fact. Uh, so that's good. That's the version that we want for now. And uh, so Java is there. I can execute Java programs. But because I want to develop uh, software here. I need to be able to compile a Java program before I can execute it. So I need another program for that. I need a Java compiler. Java compiler is called Java C. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to ask if Java C is there. Can you compile programs? Java C. And again, here, I'm not going to compile anything. I just want to know if Java C is available. So I'm just going to ask for the version. So if there is a Java C available on that machine, uh, the default one is going to print its version. So yes, that works, of course. And so I have the version, again, 8. 1.8 means 8 and some change. So that's good. This machine is good to go. And I can do uh, my development on that machine. Now, if that weren't the case, and it's probably not the case for you, uh, uh, you have to download the Java development kit from uh, the websites of Oracle, and uh, I'll show you that. Uh, let's go to the Windows machine to see if it's ready as well. OK, so let's see if this Windows machine is ready. So it's going to be very similar to the Mac. Uh, so I am in the command prompt. And the first thing is I want to see if I am able to execute Java program. So I do as I did on the Mac. I just call the program called Java and I ask for the version. So is there a program Java? Yes, there is. And uh, what is the version? 1.8 point something. It's slightly different, but it's also version 8. So that's good. I'm ready to execute Java program here. Now, can I compile a Java file here? So Java C is the compiler also. And if there is such thing, what is the version? 
So now I call that, and here I see that the system is telling me it does not recognize this command job as C. So it means that either the compiler is just not installed on the machine, or if it's installed, it's poorly configured, and so it's not working. So what I'm going to do is install a new Java development kit on this machine. So there is a link to uh, where to find that in the comments, but that tends to change over time. So maybe the best way to, for you to do that is to open a browser and just ask for uh, download a and load a Java D development kit here. And I can see here a link on Oracle, oracle.com. That's where I want to go. Uh, and here, yes, that's what I need. I need the GDK version eight. I want to download it. Okay. And so here are the kit downloads. And uh, so you see your versions for uh, a, a wide range of systems. Here, this machine is a Windows 64 bit. So that's the one I need. On my Mac, it would have been this one. And if you have different Linux, it would be there, etc. Et so I have to accept here the license agreement first. And I'm going to download this software. And now uh, it is going to save that thing. So it's a rather large uh, piece of software. It will take some time to download that. Let's jump right to there. OK, so now it's downloaded. And I'm just going to install it. I'll just go through the motion of installing that program. Now, if you're on Windows, make sure that you remember that destination folder that you select. OK, so I'm done installing this program. But on Windows, I'm not completely finished yet. I need to add some information to an environment variable called the path. So when I install the program, the GDK, uh, it asked me where to install it. And I accepted the default value, which was in C, program file, Java. And here you see that's the GDK I just installed. And so by the way, you can see that there was already, in fact, a GDK, a slightly lower version of the GDK. So uh, the reason why uh, the command was not recognized before was not bef because the GDK was not there, but because it was not correctly configured. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm configuring this new version that I just added. So I'm going to go into this directory and into the bin directory, so for bi binary files. And here you can see that there is the program Java C that we were looking for. So it is there. So I'm just going to copy that pass here. Copy. Uh, and then I need to add that pass to something called a, an environment variable, which is itself called path. So where is it? Uh, I go to this PC, right click, properties, uh, advanced system settings, and here I have the environment variable button. And here I can see that I have my environment variable. In this case, I already have a variable called path. If you don't, you just click new, and then you add a variable called path, usually low uppercase, but it doesn't matter. And then you would put the value that uh, we just uh, copied here. But in my case, I already have one, so I don't want to create a new one. I want to edit the existing one and append after the values that are already here my new directory so i'm just going to add a semicolon and then after that put the value that i have and i save that so what does it mean it means that when you type a comment from uh, the command prompt for example uh, the system has to look for the program you you you, you typed somewhere and the pass contains a series of directories in which to look and so now it should be able to find Java C because we just added the pass to that environment variable. Let's see. So I save that. OK. OK. It's all good. I need to create a new uh, command. Don't type into the existing one because you need to refresh this information. But now if I type Java C and I ask for the version here, oh, there you go. It works. I have the compiler. And that's the version that I just installed. So now I'm ready to go on this uh, Windows machine as well. 
So last, but certainly not least, we are going to need a simple text editor. So you have a number of options you can choose from. Uh, personally, I like to use uh, Sublime Text. So here it is, and uh, I like it because it provides me a sample editor and it gives me some nice color coding. So you can see here the keywords are colored differently, it's nicely indented, and it's sample. And that's what I want, a sample text editor. Now it's not to say that a more advanced IDE such as Eclipse here uh, is not good. It's actually too good. Look at that. I type uh, arrays dot uh, sort, for example, and look at the top. The import for arrays was just added for me by the IDE. Uh, another example, I type system with a lowercase, out, up, the uppercase is added for me. I mistype println and it's corrected for me. And I don't want that. I want to make those mistakes and I want to correct those mistakes myself. The IDE should not be uh, doing the work for me at this point, not yet. So please, for now, use a very simple text editor, Sublime or Atom or Notepad++, whatever you prefer, something simple. And with that, we are now ready to start coding. So we'll do that next. Thank you.